This video ought to take me 400 years because my husband has the compressor going right outside my window here, and um, I'm gonna have to pause every single time it goes off. Yay me. Hi guys, hi, how's it going? How you doing today? Hopefully today finds you well. Today I'm doing my next palette review in my palette roulette series in which I pick a palette that's in my collection that might also be in your collection and I utilize it for a couple weeks. This time it was three weeks. I use it specifically for the purposes of review. So I come back to you and talk to you about my experiences with the palette. I tell you the good, the bad, the ugly, all the things and we pick another palette and we do it again. With that said, this week I am going over the Odin's Eye collection. This isn't always about the newest thing on the market, but this week it happens to be. This is a collection that came out over the Valentine's Day holiday and I am super excited. I hope that sounds like something that you're interested in and if it does, please keep on watching. For those of you new here, hi. My name is Donna. I'm a lover of all things high and colorful beauty and self-care. I also work in the beauty industry as a field leader for Ulta Beauty. I get a lot of education in my position. I like to bring you that education here on my channel, but ultimately I'm just out here talking about makeup because I love makeup and love talking about makeup and I'm assuming that if you're here, you probably also like to talk about makeup or at the very least like to listen to somebody talk about makeup. So I sure do hope that you subscribe before you go. I'd love to welcome you into my YouTube fam. This is a mess. It's a mess today. Okay, with that said, let's roll into this review of the Odin's Eye Perfect World Collection, the three collaboration palettes that we'll be going over today. All right. Hi. Hi, everybody. I am super sad that this seems to be a mess of a video today, but here we are. Today, I am going over the three collab palettes that were part of the Odin's Eye Perfect World collection that released on Valentine's Day this year. These were my first adventure into Odin's Eye and I cannot be happier that I purchased these palettes. So these palettes came in a bundle for $91.95 and with it you got also, I'll put a picture up in here, you got also some ribbons and a scarf if you purchased the bundle at opening and you were one of the first 1,000 purchases. I will tell you, I set an alarm. I made sure that I got on there right away. This is, you know, there's been a couple of collaborations that they've done that I have been really super excited for, but missed the boat on. So I was really super excited for this one. Didn't want to miss the boat. So I definitely set an alarm, definitely got there first thing and definitely made the purchase. It didn't take very long to get it. I was super, super excited about having it shipped to me, I mean, almost immediately. It came a lot sooner than I thought it was going to. And this is a collaboration with three different YouTubers here on the beauty space. We have the Planet Spirit palette, which is in collaboration with Betty Jean, also known as Batty Bean, and that is her right there. And this one is inspired by animals. It has a beautiful, like crazy, bright color story to it. And then we have Flora Story, which is the palette that was done in collaboration with Makeup Just For Fun, and that that is her right there. And this color story is more, I would say, um, my, be one of the color stories that is more anticipated by the friends of makeup out there that maybe aren't as inspired by colorful color stories, right? Because this plays a little more neutral, a little more almost wearable thought process in many people's brains. Even though it is green and purple, it does lean very every day for the most part. And then we also have the Sea Talk palette, which is in collaboration with Lauren May Beauty, and that is her right there. And you guys know I talk about Lauren May all the time. I just love her. This one is inspired by oceans and waterways and the creatures and the, the seascapes. She is 
somebody that I talk about all the time and really is the only creator that I knew prior to purchasing these palettes. Since purchasing these palettes, I have dabbled a little bit in getting familiar with the other two creators that are collaborating with this collaboration. And I really have to say, I don't know where I've been the last several years, but these collaborators are fantastic. Uh, Betty Jean or Betty Bean is a collaborator that I think is kind of most like me in that she really dives into color in a way that is like eccentric and also creative and I I think that about myself as well and I mean it's no doubt that this is her palette collaboration. Let's start with each one of these three palettes does have cardboard packaging it is very intricate in design it does have they do have magnetic closures they do seem to be pretty strong magnets they're not necessarily weak magnets and i do think that if you decided to travel with them they would travel well in addition to that each one of them has a sleeve <laughs> wrong sleeve but each one of them has a sleeve that is very much the same as the packaging in and of itself so if you do want to travel with it absolutely put it in its sleeve and then it's not going to open up while you are traveling with it it'll be perfectly fine in that way and nice and secure the three individual palettes are collaborated with creators here on youtube and each one of them has 10 shades the 10 shades have four different finishes they have mattes they have multi-chromes, they have textured metallics, and they have shimmers. Um, they are all cruelty-free palettes, and all of their powders are also vegan powders. These are, like I said, inspired by marine life, endangered plants and animals, and they, I would say, work best over a tacky primer, especially the shimmers. There was one day and one day only that I wore shimmers on my eyelids without a NYX glitter glue or some kind of tacky primer to hold them on. I will tell you that that one day I ended up with glitter fallout all over my face all day long and it wasn't whatever because it just kind of swept away at the end of the day but there were like particles of glitter all over my face for you know a, a short period of time I think one to two washings and then that that glitter finally disappeared but that was the only day I opted to wear these glitters without a tacky primer because I really just feel like these perform so much better and have so much more impact over a glitter glue these today are over a glitter glue and I think that you can say they're just so so pretty over the top of a glitter glue so so impactful over the top of a glitter glue and while that is an extra step in my makeup routine that I don't always love it is a step that I used every single time I put these palettes on my face over the last three weeks because I have been working with these for three weeks my palette roulettes these days are more like a two-week time process but Man, I just did not want to put these palettes down. They're so inspiring, so beautiful. They work so, so well together, but they also create some really beautiful looks on their own. I think the only one I struggled with not having another palette to bring in with is this one by Betty Jean because there isn't a whole lot of depth in this palette. If you want a deeper tone, like going into the Sea Talk palette or the Floor Store palette was a good idea to bring in, like even this the navy blue in here really helped like solidify and ground some of these shadows. As a matter of fact, the navy blue is in my eye look today, along with this shadow, but also with a shadow in this palette. So I've got all three eyeshadow palettes on my eyes today. And I think that they are best in conjunction with each other. But with that said, I also feel like they are fantastic on their own. I am not sorry I purchased these palettes. I think that they are just beautiful. And I am, I could see me being regretful if I had not purchased all three of them together because they just play so well together and they do... They are so inspiring in and of themselves, but together they're just ethereal and 
so beautiful and the looks that you can come up with when you are working with all three palettes in tandem is just like unlimited with these three eyeshadow palettes so i am going to go through each one of the palettes in and of themselves i think that the mattes in these palettes are really super blendable very easy to use they almost kind of blend themselves quasi and they are shadows that you can work light to dark or dark to light it doesn't matter today i work dark to light so they don't really bleed into each other and i didn't find any any occurrence where they also muddied dependent on what shadows you were using i i didn't find any kind of qualms while working with them i didn't notice a whole lot of fallout with them yes there is fallout but even a look like this where i'm using a deep dark purple and the deep dark blue there there really wasn't a whole lot of fallout to speak of with these palettes and i also didn't really notice any patchiness in these shadows especially in the darker eyeshadows or the brighter eyeshadows sometimes those can tend to feel a little more patchy and you just have to like pat them in and just kind of leave them alone and lightly kind of blend the outer sections of the eyeshadow and I didn't really find that to be the truth with these eyeshadows. They're super pigmented while also being super blendable while also not being super soft but also not being really grippy in the pan if that makes any sense. They're, they're not super soft shadows so there's not a whole lot of kick up in the pan but they're also not super grippy where you feel like they're sandpaper to the touch, which I, I love. The only time I had any problems with these mattes is when I was trying to blend them over that tacky base that I had taken just a little bit too far uh, for an eyeshadow look where I didn't really put the glitter on top of the tackiness on the outskirts of the uh, glitter parts of the eye and then tried to buff like a, the matte over the top of that that tacky primer again that's the only time I ever had any problems with these mattes and that's more of a a me thing than it is these mattes thing some of the shimmers are more of toppers than they are um like a, a really opaque shimmer I have one of them over the top of the whole eye look today but with that said that very same one that I have topped over the eye look today is one that I used in an eye look on its own and it was perfectly fine on its own. It's kind of got like a transparent base, but it's got so many different multi-chromatic glitters in it that it really showed up on the eye look, on the inner portion of the eye look, even though it's got that transparent base, which I really loved about it because a lot of times toppers are just not the shadow that you can go in and do a whole eye look with because there's there's a transparent base there's no oomph to them but these had a lot of oomph to them what I would also say is that you are going to get fallout from these whether you're using a tacky base or no you're going to see some fallout from these especially if you're not using your finger to apply the shadow to your eye using your finger really decreases the amount of fallout that you get from these glitters but um I don't always love to use my finger in makeup. So I would use my brushes and with a more fluffy brush, you're of course gonna get a lot more fallout. With a more dense brush, you're gonna get a lot less fallout, but you're still gonna see some fallout by using anything other than your finger. So finger application is probably best with these shimmers. I would say that they also show up more impactful when you're using your finger to apply them. Today I used a brush for the greens and I used my finger for the topper shade. I feel like it's a very good variety of what it could look like with the different application methods of said shadows. I think that the greens are still super impactful, but I did have to go over them a couple of times in a brush application to get them this impactful. And of course they are over a glitter glue. They don't really crease. I didn't see them exacerbate any kind of texture in my eyes and truth be told I have some pictures of makeup looks 10 and 12 hours in and they look phenomenal so I don't know if it's the tacky beast but even the um, matte eyeshadows that weren't on top of a tacky beast look phenomenal as well. They look as though I had just placed them on my eyes and maybe we're at six hours of wear, um, they last 
for a very long time before significant fading or movement on the eye. I had zero problems with with these palettes. These shimmers are not super creamy. They're also not super dry. So, I mean, it's just a very weird formula because like I said, the mattes aren't super buttery, but they're also not super grippy. The, the shimmers are not super creamy, but they're also not super dry. So I don't really know how to like per perfectly equate how the, how the shadows feel um, but I can tell you that they work really, really good. I am really super excited. This is the second indie brand this year that I have dabbled in that I haven't dabbled in before. Blend Bunny being the first, this one being the second. And man, where have I been? That is just the thing like indie, you guys. Indie might be where it's at for me now. If I'm going to be spending, you know, $129 on a Natasha Denona palette, why not spend $100 on three palettes from Odin's Eye instead? <laughs> like, I love Natasha Denona and that will never change, but I can see Blend Bunny and Odin's Eye kind of really coming up to the surface of, like, favorite eyeshadow palettes, favorite eyeshadow formulas for me. These are very pigmented upon, upon per first application, but they also blend out super easily. You can... It, it's just they're they're really really impactful and really really pretty and I'm not sad in the slightest that I purchased these shadows what I will say is that this palette specifically the planet spirit palette by um, batty bean I did see quite a lot of staining from so all of these shades right here stain like no other and other than that I didn't see staining in any of the other shades this sea kelp or I think it's called sea kelp green was my favorite inner corner shade throughout these last three weeks I just think that they they all did such a really good job of creating these palettes and Onzai did such a really good job of making them come to life so with that said, let's do some swatches because I do believe being that they are super brand new palettes that you deserve some swatches. I will say, and typically I don't do that with 30 eyeshadow palette pans, but I will say that each one of these palettes has a net weight of 2.5 grams or 0.45 ounces um, per palette. So that means that each one of the pans is 0 0.045 ounces per pan and that's a pretty standard size eyeshadow pan i think that's bigger than like an abh old school palette pan but it's about an ounce less or 0 0.01 ounces less than like a color pop single so i'm going to start with the planet spirit palette by betty jean let's swatch these guys i'm so excited you guys these are beautiful and I will go in and just kind of drag them down. And then if I'm seeing that you need some extra umph, I will give you that. But I don't think that you will. So the first one we have here is Fauna. Fauna is transparent base. And it is a multi-chrome pink. And it is stunning. But you guys can see when I turn my hand, you can't really see it. Except for like down here, it does look kind of bluish. And then up there, it looks very pink. This is a beautiful duochrome, multi-chrome pink in this set. The next one I have is Kingdom. Kingdom is a bright green matte. Then I have Animalia. Animalia is such a beautiful like orange based pearly with multi-chrome glitters in it. It does look very ethereal on an eye look it is just so pretty this is probably one of my favorites in the bunch i just loved using this on my on my eyes and then we have pride which is a bright purple matte and that is a pinky swatch folks you guys hear me talk about pinky swatches being trash every single time i do swatches that's a pinky swatch and that's what it looks like it's just so so pretty and then we have majestic which is a golden yellow pearl with multicolor shimmers in it this is kind of a buttery yellow but it's got the multicolor shimmers in it which make it look like kind of orangey kind of i loved it in collaboration with this 
shade on an eye look like this in the inner corner section out into the lid and then this one on the main parts of the lid out to the lower out to the outer third such a beautiful eye look then we have rescue rescue is a bright pink matte kind of like a fluorescent pink almost really beautiful it is in my eye look today then we have familiar Familiar is such a beautiful bright green shimmer with multicolor shimmers inside of it. So it looks like kind of tealy and it, it is on the inner corner area of my eye look today. Then we have Habitat, which is a bright orange matte. This one I would say um, really shows up well in an eye look, but in a swatch it is probably the worst. And then we have Kindred, which is a bright purple pearl with multicolor shimmers in it. It shows a very, very purple pinky in an eye look. It's so, so pretty. And then we have Sanctuary. And Sanctuary is the bright, like, rosy red in this group. And it is the deepest one in this group so it is the one that you have to use to like deepen the eye look I don't necessarily think it does a lot for deepening the eye look which is why I say these palettes work better in tandem with each other I think I would be this one is the one that called to me the most because I am a color queen but I would be remiss if I did not say that I probably would have been not loving this palette as much if I did not have the other palettes to help feed into the depth that I really wanted to get from this palette. Not that this palette is bad by any means because it's absolutely not, but there's just, there's just not a whole lot of depth in this, to be honest. The next palette we're gonna go into is the Flora Story palette. This is the one that I said would probably be the everyday makeup user's preference because it's a little more normal color story or everyday color story, if that makes any sense. So let's show you what these ones look like. Okay, so first things first, this one is called Dawn. It also has a transparent base but it is a white to pink to gold shifting duochrome. It is so pretty and such a beautiful color for like an inner corner. This is actually one that I put on the inner section of my eyelid without a color underneath it. And it actually pops pretty, pretty fantastically. I got some really great compliments when using this all over my lid space. Then we have Shroom. Shroom is a matte, really cool toned light brown. Then we have Magnolia. Magnolia is a beautiful lavender, like grayish lavender purple pearl with multicolor shimmers inside of it. It kind of shifts from like a taupey lavender to a silver. It's so pretty. Then we have Sage, which is just what it says. It's a gray, sagey green, really beautiful. And then we have Lush, which Lush is a green pearl with green shimmers to it also. So it's really got a beautiful like green kick to it. Kind of also looks a little bit turquoisey, but I think it's very different from the Planet Spirit palette green. And both of them are in my eye look. None of these colors really stain the eyes. They're, they're all very, like I said, not necessarily everyday, but they're everyday leaning. So um, they don't have a lot of the like crazy colors that typically will cause staining. So then we have Clover. Clover is kind of an army green. I think that this is more minty, but also dirty army green than it, uh, than its counterpart down here. They really do go together quite well. Then we have a shimmer here, and this one is called Best Buds. It's a light, like, greeny gold shimmer with multicolor um, shimmers inside of it. I love this color. Green is my favorite. You all know that. Not necessarily um, on my eyes, but it is my favorite color. And then we have this kind of lilac-y color called Azalea. It is a gray-toned light purple matte. 
Then we have another green, and this one is kind of a yellow green metallic or yellow green shimmer with multicolor shimmers. I think that those two shimmer greens right there are super similar, but you guys, they really do look very different on an eye look. I put both of them in an eye look. I think I got a picture of it. And then we have the deep purple. This one is called Orchid, and it is a dark purple matte with a little bit of a grayer tone to it. Um, they describe almost all of these colors as <laughs> like gray toned. I don't necessarily think that they're gray toned, but man, that orchid is beautiful. And the this one and this one really go together well. And these two with this on the eye, oh my God, so, so pretty. But I do have this shade in my eye look today. I do have this shade in my eye look today. And I just really, really love this palette in and of itself. But you guys can see this transparent based one here. You can't really hardly see it, but maybe if I get a little bit closer. Sea Talk palette, here we go. So the Sea Talk palette is probably one of the ones, I think that this one would, if, if you're a normal everyday consumer, I think that this one would probably be your number two because even though there are some blues in here, there are some really normal colors also in this palette. I do have this on my inner corner today. I also have this built into the outer corner in my eye look today and I think that is it from this palette. So for Lauren Mays we have Dolphin Tail. Dolphin Tail is a gray toned light brown matte and then we have it kind of leans honestly a little bit more lavender than say this cool tone brown up here. So this cool tone brown up here definitely has a little bit more of a camel feel to it. Whereas this one has a little bit more of almost a purple feel to it, which when I was initially looking at the palettes, I, I thought that there was a lot of overlap between them, but there's really not. This one here is called Sunken Treasure and Sunken Treasure is a bronze shimmer with gold flecks in it. It kind of gives you a little bit of that fire, sunshiny color to it. But man, look at just how shiny that is. It's so, so pretty. I'm not really the best at arm swatches. Okay, then we have this one, which is Electric Kelp. This is a chartreuse metallic. It really kind of shocked me because I thought it was a matte when I first put it into an eye look, but it's definitely a metallic. I've worn this in my brow bone. It looks beautiful on my brow bone in an outer corner, blending out any of the blues in here. Oh my God, any of the greens in here. It's just such a beautiful, beautiful shade. And then we have this one here. This one's called Mermaid Scale. It's a pale teal shimmer with multicolor shimmers inside of it. Really beautiful shade. And then we have this one, which is called ocean jewel and it's a deep blue shimmer with a bright blue metallics in there or bright blue shimmers in there and it kind of leans a little duochromatic red blue or pinky blue maybe indigo maybe i'm not really sure but it is stunning in an eye look i have a smoky pearl smoky pearl is a listen it's categorized as a coffee toned base with multicolor shimmers but I really do think it's kind of more of a lavender taupey shade. It is so pretty. S much more pretty than I thought it was going to be. As a matter of fact this is one of the last shadows that I ever used but I loved the look that came with this eyeshadow. And then we have Driftwood which is a medium brown, kind of red toned brown, very warm brown, beautiful shade. Then we have iridescent shell and iridescent shell is a bright pink with multicolor shimmers. It really doesn't show up very pink. You can see how pale the pink looks on the like base of it, but my God, it's so, so pretty. And then we have sea spray, which is I see blue. It's a blue metallic 
really, really pretty blue metallic. And then we have Night Swim, which is horrible arm swatches, peeps. This is not the eyeshadow's fault. Is a deep, inky blue matte. So I'm going to go back over those horrible arm swatches really quick so that we can see all of them in their true glory. Just one swipe, doing it all in a way that hopefully makes it look a lot prettier than this. Okay, I just went over these last three down here. The rest of them I think look fine, but these are the colors. These are the swatches of all those shades, and I just cannot with these palettes. I think that you guys can see just how beautifully they would work together to create the most fantastic, beautiful eyeshadow looks. I think that they all work independently on their own, really. This one I don't think works as independently on its own as these two do, but it definitely can work independently on its own. It just lacks a lot more depth than I think I like in an eyeshadow palette. And again, that's preference. With that said, each one of them has, you know, a really good ratio of mattes to shimmers. I think that they all perform just so, so well. And I could not, I could not be happier that I have them in my palette collection. I couldn't be happier that I have all three of them in my palette collection. I'm super stoked to have tried Odin's Eye and super stoked that I, I just went for it. There's so many times that I've been like, I need to buy that. And then I'm like, no, let's pull it back a little bit. You don't need that. Um, I am really glad that of the collaborations that I've gotten, this is the one that I ended up getting. I do love, as I'm viewing the two collaborators, that I didn't really know. I do love all three of these collaborators for different reasons. Um, Lauren May Beauty, of course, has been somebody that I've talked about over and over again on my channel. There's just really something special about Lauren. I, I firmly feel that she's just probably the most creative out here on this platform. I really, really like her a lot. Between her and Angelica Nequist, I think both of them come up with the most creative um, thought processes when coming to us with a video, but I think Lauren probably tops everybody. I, I've watched her since a very long time ago, so I wasn't I wasn't going to like pass this up. They have done some collaborations with other uh, YouTubers. They've done a collaboration also with Angie. Um, that was the last one that I was going to pick up that I kind of missed the tr mo missed the boat on, but I, I'm really glad that I finally have been able to dabble with Odin's Eye. And again, this review is three weeks in the making because I didn't want to put these palettes down. If it doesn't tell you anything, it absolutely should. So I'm going to wash off these hands. I'm going to go pick another palette and then I'll be right back. Okay, after washing off, you can see this hand is really pink and this is the hand that the Planet Spirit palette was on, the one that I told you I did see a lot of staining from. So there is quite a bit of staining from that palette, even from the greens. This is where the other palettes were and there's like really no trace that there was uh, swatches on those on that hand or arm so you can see that there's a slight bit of staining I it's not a make or break for me it never is fallout isn't a make or break for me like good the best formulas I have ever had in my life really do have a considerable amount of fallout to be honest so the palette that I'm choosing to work with over the next couple weeks is this one here this is uh, again a rather new palette to my collection this is the blend bunny cosmetic surge palette there is a reason for me picking this palette. So this palette is a palette that I'm picking because of the shades in it. These straight up neon colors down here are going to be phenomenal where I'm going next week. You guys will be seeing it as I'm at FLC, which is the field leadership conference that Ulta Beauty does for GMs and above every single year. And we have a theme night every single year. And the theme night this year is neon. And I think that these colors here are going to be phenomenal for neon night. Now I'm going to bring some of my neon eyeliners. I'm going to bring some of my more neon glitters as well. I do think that these glitters here will suit 
neon night, but I also want some, uh, maybe a little more, um, maybe a little more bright neon glitters also. But the other reason why I'm bringing this palette is because there's a lot in here, right? There's a lot to pick from. I don't necessarily have to go with one color story. I don't have to have plain brown eyes. I get to play with some colors, but I also have some neutrals in here that I can wear. And because I utilize the Dollhouse palette in this not that long ago, I do have that review up on my channel. I'll stick it up in the cards for you. I know that this eyeshadow formula is super easy to use. I also know that this is an indie brand and it is not a brand that I'm going to receive from the Field Leadership Conference in terms of gratis. So it's not like I'm bringing a palette with me that I'm going to get in gratis at some point in time while we are there at FLC. It's also probably not a palette that I'm going to see any of the same colors that I do receive in makeup from gratis at FLC while I am there. This is the palette that I'm going to be reviewing next time we are here. I hope that you guys do stick around, like and subscribe, that you hit that notification bell so that you're notified every single time I upload a video um, because it's three times a week, every single week. So I am super happy to have you here. Let me know what you guys think about the Perfect World palettes, that collaboration with Odin's Eye. Did you pick it up? I would be interested to see some of the looks that you did. If you have an Instagram, let me know. Um, let me know what you think about the review of this palette. Did I talk you into any of them? Did I talk you out of any of them? I would be interested to hear. I do know that they are currently on a restock, but that this restock from everything that I understand is once it's gone, it's gone. So, and because at the time I'm recording this, it's on a restock, but by the time you're seeing it, it's going to be about five days later. Please do look, but either way, you guys own Zy formula. I'm having a really good time with, um, like I said, they last forever. I've heard some really bad reviews of these palettes, but these, the palettes in that Perfect World collection all got 4.7 stars or more on the Odin's Eye website. Um, but because they're so new, there's like 10 and 33 and 39 reviews on those palettes. So there's not very many reviews, but um, they all got really stellar reviews. And I think I would rank each one of them at probably a 4.9. The lowest ranking one would be the Planet Spirit one. And only because there's not uh, there's not a shade that's super deep in that eyeshadow palette, but I do think that you can get a, a really beautiful, decent eye look with that palette on its own as well. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. I do hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope you give it a like. I hope that you'll want to subscribe before you go. I hope that you and yours are doing well, that you all are healthy and safe and getting along as best you can out there. I hope that you are loving each other, but loving each other from afar, every single one of you. And until next time, Bye, friends.